It's only taken approximately 12 months to get one of these inside the UK. They were released a few months back in the EU and they have been out of stock ever since. However, inside the US, they've been available for the last 12 months. So what's taken Unify so long? Nonetheless, in this video today, we're gonna to take a look at the doorbell, how to install it, what the settings are, what the features are, and how to install it with a chime. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the like if you found this video useful and even drop me some comments if you want to as well. The links to all the products are in the description below, so feel free to check them out. And if you have installed your doorbell another way, for example, with a wireless chime or digital chime, the one main thing that took me towards the doorbell, other than being very heavily invested in the Unify products, is the fact that there's no subscription fee. Goodbye ring, no more doorbell subscriptions. Anyway, I won't go on too much longer, let's jump straight into it. Let's start by having a look at the Honeywell uh, chime. So we can have a quick look on the back here. Um, this can be used by batteries or power. So we'll just have a look at what comes inside the box quickly. There we go. So in here you can see we've got our connections in here. So 8, 16 volt, uh, 15 watt max and 6 volts. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 connections here. Um, we will have a look at the Unify doorbell uh, first to see what connections we require. Um, if you don't want to power it by the mains, you can actually add four batteries just here. So let's put this to one side quickly and then we will have a look at the doorbell itself. So the doorbell, uh, let's just take this off. And then we just open it up on the sides. And there we go, that's the doorbell. So if we take this out first, um, you can see the camera up here, just a quick push button, you've got your speaker down here, uh, it looks like your IR sensor down here, and if we flip this over, you can see at the back we've got a reset button, uh, not quite sure what that button does, and then you've probably got your connections for your power. So also inside this, if we take this off, so this is the level. Um, that comes with it so you can place this on the wall if this is the wall for example you can place this on the wall just here get that at the right level and make sure your doorbell is straight so that's quite useful to have um, so we'll pop that to a side and it just tells you about the doorbell and if you want to get started that's the QR code and it will take you to a link um, inside here we have it looks like the wall mount wall plugs and screws uh, looks like it has a SIM card remover tool, which we'll have to see what we need to use that for, and some 3M tape if you want to stick it somewhere. It also has an adapter if you want to have it off the side of the wall, so if you want to have it at an angle, it comes with one of these, so that's quite useful. So further deeper inside the box, it looks like there's some power cables in here. So we'll figure out what to do with these very shortly. So. My assumption is this is for the um, chime to so plug into there, and this one, these go into here, I think, by the looks of it. But we'll have a look at these shortly on how to put it all together. Inside the EU version, I don't believe this comes inside the US one, is a transformer, which is what we need. So we need to convert the 240 volt power um, to 24 volt or 16 volt in this case, or 230 volt to 16 volt in this case. Okay, and I think that's everything that comes inside. So um, there's nothing else to it. So I guess let's quickly look into how we start piecing this together. So before we start this part, I wanna very explicitly say that I am nowhere near a qualified electrician. This is just purely for demonstration purposes to show you how to put this together. So firstly, the first thing I wanna show you is the transformer. So I've already plugged this bit in. So we have the two bits at the top which you can see is the 16 volt to uh, two connectors and we have two connectors at the bottom which you can see is the 230 so i've plugged in my live and neutral already so that's ready to go so that's already plugged into the mains um, obviously it is powered off at the moment before you try anything like this do make sure you turn off your power um, so the first thing we're going to do here is plug a um, 
ground and uh, 24 volt on ground into here or 16 volt in this case but again I'm, my cabling standards on or the colouring of the cable isn't conforming to any specific standards so if you are attempting to install this please check your local guidelines. Actually just before I start that I want to show you the back of here so we want to show you these just here so these are this is something that you can connect up with your chime and also this is something that you connect onto the back of your doorbell so if I quickly show you these um, this one just here goes uh, just in here like this then I'm going to quickly screw this in and then we do the same with the other one okay so they're now in so we can just connect out there's a little um, hole at the end we can connect our cable in here just by pressing that down so as I said before we take one and we plug this one into here so if I could show you we we'll pop that in here and then we're going to screw this in okay just make sure just pull your cable make sure it's tight and then while we're doing this we'll do the same with the blue one as well so we'll pop that in here I have to say trying to do this looking through the camera lens is very different Okay, so now we have that connected up. Um, so we're gonna take our blue one. Um, let's connect up to this first. So we're gonna connect up to our doorbell. Um, I haven't seen this actually be in any specific order. So I'm gonna pop our brown cable into here. Okay, so you can see that's gone in. Yeah, there is a bit of exposed cable again. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, and then what we actually wanna do is we wanna grab another cable and we're gonna go from here into one of these. So let's just open this up. Okay, that's gone in. And then we're gonna take our blue one that we had here, and we're gonna plug it into, and we're gonna plug it into that one here. So you can almost see, if I show you this quickly, you can almost see it goes to here, and then from here into here, and then back around to here. So then what you wanna do is, take one and pop one in here and then we'll take another one and pop that one in here and there you go that's all connected up so now if I flip this over and if I just give a bit of power you can see my doorbell is now turning on now so I have actually configured this already in my um, Unify system but I'm just gonna quickly show you that the doorbell works and then I'm gonna go and take you through the setup on how to do it. Okay, there we go, that's now set up. So if I now press this, you can hear the doorbell go off. There we go, so that's now working. To get this set up initially, you need to use your phone. So let's have a quick look at how you run through the setup itself. Okay, so just getting, so just waiting for, I don't know, it's just blurred out, but it's actually the doorbell's just starting up, so it's waiting for that to start up. There we go, so now you can see automatically it's found a new device, so we can just click add. And then it's gonna connect to it via Bluetooth. This is similar to the G3 Instant in terms of how to set this up. You go through the, the standard setup. So just going to get this set up. Interestingly, it's not found the SSIDs. Normally, the last time I added it, it did. So let's just quickly run through that again. So add, add the doorbell. So it's going to connect to it via Bluetooth. There we go, now it's found the network. So if I just join that network, it's going to type in my password. There we go, now it's connecting to the network. There we go again, a similar sort of sound to the G3 Instant and the Unify Access. Uh, let's give it a name. It says, do you have a Chime box? And I'll say, yes, install with Chime box. It says, are you sure you want to install the Chime box settings? If you want to click yes, install. So enable that because we do have a Chime box enabled. Um, you can add the alert and there we go. And there we go. That is the uh, doorbell set up and working. So now we're into our UDM Pro. Let's jump straight into Protect. And inside here, it's your normal protect interface, how you'd expect to see it. So on the left hand side, you have cameras and you can see I have the front door here. So if we go into it, let's have a quick look at the settings that are available. So here is you can click on the play button and you would get a live image of what's happening on your doorbell right now. Um, you can have a custom message so you can leave it to say leave package at door do not disturb, whatever you want to have on there. So you can have that, so you can update, you can have that and update the message 
and click display and that will then go off and display it so you'll see that on your screen right now then you come back and we have a look at the overview so it gives you a quick idea of what's going on with your doorbell the connection the uptime the last motion etc what version it's running etc etc uh, we move into general this is where you can give it another name so if you gave it something earlier throughout the app and you want to give it something different you can update it here we have the microphone status here we want sound status sounds on and status light on and you can adjust the picture quality so let's just apply the changes there click the overview and within here within the image itself you can choose what you want to display you can have the time date logo bitrate whatever you want to have on there when it comes to recording there are a few settings so when to record you can choose always so you can actually have it as a cctv camera um, which is always constantly recording um, motion events or smart detections so you can choose when you want that to record uh, the recording quality so at the moment i think it's going to be set to 720 or 1080 something like that um, this does recording up to 4k so for that it doesn't actually tell you what quality the image is but it gives you the best image quality all the way up to 100 percent so i would assume if you select 100 percent um, you would have a 4k image there is a high frame rate mode so if you want higher frame rates in terms of the the view uh, the frames per second um, you can enable this and your frame rate will jump to 45 frames per second however the disclaimer on that one is you won't be able to actually um, record in 4k i think your maximum is 1080 um, when you enable the 45 frames per second then you have motion events so you have some settings in here so if your motions are sorry if your motions are triggered too quickly you can have a delay um, how many seconds you want to record before so if you want to record two seconds before the motion it will do that for you and how much to record after the motion so that's a, a configurable setting that you can use here and then the motion you can use which algorithm you want to use there's an enhanced version which is if you wanted to pick that up or if you want a stable version it's entirely up to you uh, the last one is smart detections so this will actually pick up a person um, if it picks it up on the camera it will take a snap of it and leave it in your library um, if you're storing them and also there is a vehicle detection which is in beta at the moment so I haven't actually mounted my doorbell at the front yet so I haven't had a chance to actually test the vehicle one then we move into zones so you can add motion zones so if you have a say for example it's overseeing onto the neighbor's driveway and you don't want to pick up motion on the neighbor's driveway you can go and you can add zone so you can click add new zone at the bottom and you can choose what area you want it to uh, what area you want it to um, record from or pick up motion from sorry uh, discard that because I don't need that at the moment and then the smart zones this is again same if you want to want it to pick up the vehicle or uh, person detection you don't want it to pick up the driveway you want a uh, neighbor's driveway you want it to pick up your own so you can add that here and the privacy zones at the end so again in terms of privacy of your neighbor or garden wherever you're facing or somewhere else um, you can actually blank out certain parts so it doesn't record it so if I add a zone in here for example if I want to don't want to record if I don't want to record this side I can click save and then that side of the image will actually be blank when it gets recorded so let's discard that as I don't need that and then the last but not least the the general management of the camera so you can reboot it remotely you can unmanage it really good thing is you can actually use this as an RSTP feed so if you want to pick up something else or you want to link it into something else you can do that from here you can disable the microphone if you don't want it to pick up anything and if you have a mechanical chime which I do which we went through earlier um, you can populate that here or if you actually have a digital chime you can change that here also as well so a couple of things you might want to look at just before we finish this part up so if we go across to settings and go to my alerts this is where you actually get an eight this is where you actually get prompted on push notifications from your phone so if I go into here quickly this is when the doorbell rings uh, you want to always send it um, you can actually have a custom schedule here so for example if you're in an office and you only want it to go between nine and five or uh, six and six for example depending on however your office works or also if you want to turn it off at night so if you want to go between midnight and 6 a.m you don't want to be disturbed with any alerts or anything you can put a custom schedule in here which is really good now for the 
alerts themselves in terms of push notifications. It's fairly similar to the way the other cameras work. You either select email or push notification depending on what you want. So from the front doorbell, when it connects or disconnects, I'd like to know about it because if it's disconnected, you want to know why. Um, in terms of motion, uh, yeah, I definitely want to know when there's motion at the front door. Um, so that will then send you another push notification. And same again with the smart detection. So when it picks up a person or picks up a vehicle, that will then send you a push notification. You can actually opt for emails as well. So I've just grabbed my phone and I wanna show you one last thing on here, which is the two-way audio talk. So on the phone itself, you can actually see we've got, you can turn this on and off and in the bottom right-hand corner, there's like a volume button. So you can actually turn that off to hear what's going on outside. You can go back and forth 15 seconds, that's fairly standard. But the one on the bottom left is what I'm really more interested in. That one gives you your two-way audio speech. So I can undo that. The doorbell is in the same room as me, so I've turned that off fairly quickly. But you get the idea. Um, within the app itself, that's one thing I wanted to show you as within the actual protect software on the web interface, it doesn't look like you can actually do two-way talk. But if you have found the option, please do let me know. Um, if I quickly pop back, if I quickly pop back on here to my live feed, um, the thing I found was just the audio. I've not actually found in terms of talk back on your laptop as well. So it definitely works on the app. Um, I've just not seen it in the web interface as well. So what did you decide? Are you going to switch away from your Ring, Nest or whatever doorbell you have at the moment? Are you going to switch across to the Unify one? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, drop me a comment below and hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button too. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.